Am I the a-hole for not babysitting for my sister-in-law anymore after she called the police on me? My sister-in-law and I have an agreement. She watches my kids three days a week, and I watch hers three days a week. This agreement has stood since March 2020 without issues. Any changes have been discussed weeks in advance. A couple weeks ago, we had an argument. The next day, I brought my kids to her house, dropped them off, and left. I didn't speak to my sister-in-law because when one of us is in a rush like I was, it's standard for us to just let the kids out, stay in the car, and drive off when you see the door open. I drove to work about 40 minutes away. When I got there, I had about 20 missed calls and even more texts, all from my sister-in-law, all saying she didn't want to watch the kids given our argument. Her first text arrived a little before I got to her place, but I didn't see it until I got to work because my phone is always on silent when I drive. I rang her, said I'll arrange to work from home, then come get the kids. She said I have 45 minutes to get back to her place or she would call the police. I told my supervisor the situation, and she said I could leave after I did a few things. This delayed me 20 minutes. When I got back to my sister-in-law's just over an hour later, she said she'd already called the police when the 45 minutes ran out. I then had to stick around long enough to tell the officer that I didn't abandon my children. There was just a communication issue. Sister-in-law and I had another shouting match later over this. I arranged other childcare for my kids, and I've been mostly ignoring her since. However, she reached out and apologized, and has asked if I'd be willing to go back to the old childcare arrangement. I've told her to go screw herself. I work with kids. If I got child abandonment in my record, I would never work in my field again. But she knew, and her calling the police was a massive overreaction. So if she needs a babysitter? She can go whistle for all I care. She said that if I checked my phone, talked to her that morning, or came back when I was supposed to, she would not have needed to call the police. And I did this to myself, as she gave me a warning with that first text, and I could have checked my phone or spoken to her directly when I got to her place, all of which she says she would have done if she were in my position, given that we'd argued the night before. I've told her that if she thinks I'm babysitting for her, she's freaking delusional, and she's on her own. Because of my refusal, it's looking like she may have to quit her job, because my brother and her would pay more for a babysitter than they would earn from her working. My mother and brother have both called me Nihal because there were no consequences to recalling the police, and that while she overreacted, she's apologized. So if I really forgive her, I'll let us move on. This income loss would also mean that she, my brother, and my niece and nephew might need to move somewhere cheaper that my brother might have to take on extra hours at work, and in an extreme scenario, they may even be completely unable to live independently, meaning they'd have to move in with her parents, who live several hours away. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. The only delusional person here is sister-in-law. Who calls the police and an essential worker out of spite? Let her struggle to find childcare or lose her job. You could have easily lost yours. In the name of full disclosure, I'm not exactly an essential worker, but my service has remained open, and I need to go into my workplace a few days a week to get confidential documents, among other things. It could have been bigger than your job. It could impact the custody of your kids. Your family's delusion if they think you are the a-hole. Your sister-in-law's actions have consequences, and would be lucky if you ever let her be close to your kids ever again. If your mom or anybody else complains you do not look after the kids, they can look after them themselves. Not a hole. Don't let her reel you back in. She still blames you for her calling the police, which means she isn't sorry and would do it again. Her losing you as a babysitter is a consequence of her actions. Forgot that part. That's essentially a non-apology if it ever was one. She said that if I checked my phone, talked to her that morning, or came back when I was supposed to, she would not have needed to call the police, and I did this to myself. Basically, she darvoed. Deny, accuse, reverse victim, and offender. Not only it is gross to up and decide to not watch the kids as per your agreements because she is mad at you, indeed take it out on the kids, but also to let you know by text after you had already left. She was trying to create another argument. She beyond escalated this to a place it never should have gone. Calling the police and risking your licensure. Your mom and brother need to take a flying leap, though, for encouraging you to sweep this under the rug. She has shown you her true colors. 
Now believe her and follow your gut instinct of cutting her out. And if she complains that she has to leave her work, your mind whichever flying monkey she sends to harass you that she did this to herself. Not day hole, OP. Not day hole. She wanted to escalate it? Enjoy the outcome of the escalation. I'm annoyed that the brother and mother-in-law aren't telling her that she messed up. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for saying that taking care of my kids by myself was relaxing? My wife thinks I am devaluing her contribution to our family and implying she's got it easy. My 40 male wife, 35 female, and I have two kids. My wife is a stay-at-home mom while I am an air traffic controller. My son is 13 months old and my daughter is nearly 3 years old. Our issue occurred because my wife has been a bit steer crazy during this pandemic and feels trapped being at home constantly. I try to help by having weekend outings outdoors, but there is only so much we can safely do. She was particularly upset when she found out that because her parents and siblings who live in another state have finally been fully vaccinated, they were going to have a get-together and spend a weekend together after a year part. She initially intended to take the kiddos with her, but due to scheduling issues with some important doctor's appointments for my son, she wouldn't be able to go. I suggested to her that she still goes and I'll take care of the kiddos while she's gone and use some time off of work. She initially left and said there was no way I could handle the kids on my own and that daddy playtime after work hasn't prepared me for handling two kids on my own. I was pretty miffed by this comment and told her I guarantee I can handle it. I'm an ATC. It's not like I can't handle stress. We discussed it further and I told her I really think she needs to take this trip for the sake of her mental health. After some convincing, she decided to go. And over the course of Tuesday to Sunday, I took care of the kids, cleaned and took care of all meals. I got my son to his appointments. We played outside since we finally got some nice weather and it all went off without a hitch. The problem was that I think my wife thought I was going to be completely out of my depth and sitcom husband style have the rugrats destroying the house while I helplessly looked on. This is not what happened. I enjoyed my time with my kids, and throughout the week as she checked in, multiple times a day, she seemed a bit annoyed how calm I was about taking on this responsibility by myself. When she arrived home and saw everything was good, she seemed relieved. But when I commented that I had an extremely relaxing week slash weekend with the kids, she blew up on me and said I was being completely insensitive and that acting like I had it so easy was like coming into her workplace and commenting on how easy her job is. I disagree. I was just trying to assure her that the kids didn't get neglected and that it wasn't a hardship to take care of them. She doesn't see it that way. Am I the a-hole? No a-holes here. I have two kids and three step kids, and it's a nightmare. Looking after the kids on your own for a few days isn't something that's going to cause burnout in comparison to being with them 24 7. So, your ability to cope in this situation isn't a representative example for her to be resentful over or you to be particularly proud of. Having said that, isn't ADC the job with the highest self harm rate in the world? If that's true, no wonder you're good at dealing with stress. Not day hole. Rather than being excited that her husband can take care of the kids with no issues and using it as a chance to take breaks more often, which it sounds like she needs, she wanted you to fail somehow? Perhaps it is her stress talking. I don't think what you did was devaluing at all. My husband finds it fun to take all three kids grocery shopping, and I think it is a nightmare to wrangle three kids at a large grocery store with samples tempting them everywhere. So. Guess who does the grocery shopping with all three kids while I make a nice family meal for us on Saturday? Pre-pandemic, of course. She sounds a bit on edge and needs more breaks and possibly some counseling to help her. Maybe set up every month a full day or two for her to do something with friends. Being a full-time stay-at-home mom is hard since it feels like a never-ending day with no markers or milestones. I about climbed the walls during maternity leave with each of my kids and I adored being at home with them. Take care of her and your family. You are doing great. It sounds like your wife really needed that trip. Also, you weren't being insensitive about her caretaking abilities. She's the one who was being insensitive. How long of an opinion does she have of you that she thinks you'd be utterly incapable of watching your own kids for a few days? Not day hall. No a halls here. You also need to realize, as does she, that you had them for a weekend by yourself. She has them nearly all the time by herself. 
It's much easier to get kids to behave well when it's new but still apparent, especially when things go off without a hitch. The longer you do it, the more hitches you'll come across. Lockdown is getting to her, but you're not being insensitive as you should be, I personally feel. Next story. Am I a haul for not cooking after everyone insulted what I was making? I'm 17 female, the oldest of five. Ever since COVID, my parents have left me in charge at home and have me cooking dinner most nights, six out of seven to be exact. My siblings and I are going to school virtually, so we're in the house together all day, although they're going out to friends more now. There were always complaints about the food I was cooking. Don't want pasta, nor rice, why more chicken? Used up too many groceries for one dish. But lately, it has been bugging me more. I made pizza one night. I did a regular pizza because I was tired of complaints about the choices I was making. But even that wasn't good enough. My siblings all wanted more cheese and said it was horrible. Siblings are 15 male, 14 male, 12 female, 10 female. My dad wanted pineapple and ham on his pizza. My mom said pizza wasn't what she wanted to come home to on a Wednesday afternoon. I said nothing. I didn't even show I was frustrated. But the next day, I didn't make them anything. I made myself some spicy chicken noodles. Had it all cleaned up and everything before anyone got home and then everyone was home and they were hungry and complaining. And then my parents exploded because they said I was being petty and rude. And they threatened to ground me because I didn't do all my chores. I told them they should have thought about that before crapping all over everything. And I was doing more than enough. And why ground me when I never even leave the house anyway? I'm basically a living nanny at this point. And I get treated worse than they would treat a paid nanny. They said it was a wrong move to let them go without food, especially my siblings. I guess I can see why that would be an a-hole move, but honestly, they should be more appreciative too. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. All four of your whiny siblings are old enough to minimally operate a microwave. Your parents are fools to think that grounding a person that is home all of the time is going to have any effect. Maybe there could be a night for each sibling to make a dinner. Your parents could cook on the weekends. Seriously, my 8-year-old literally made breakfast for my husband, 3-year-old and me this morning. Granted, it was toast and, already, hard-boiled eggs, but it was buttered, salted, and plated when I came down. Literally, no excuse for one person out of six to be expected to do all of the cooking with these age ranges. Yes, my daughters were making their sack lunches in first grade, under supervision to prevent a bag full of only chips cookies, and fruit roll-ups. I hope that things get better for the OP. Not today, Hall, and this is classic. Pawning off this much work on the oldest daughter. Your parents should redistribute the chore load. No one should be forced to feed seven people every night, especially if they're going to hear complaints about it. You have seven family members. Why not assign each one a dinner once a week? With some allowances made for the 10 to 12-year-old, of course. But even they should be able to learn to boil past and heat up sauce with supervision. Let me guess, you have to clean the dishes too? If I were you, I would have made my throwaway user named Basin Cinderella. Most of the time I clean up, yeah. Occasionally my mom has stepped in and done it, but it's normally paired with witching about how much there is to clean up. So, you do the cooking and cleaning for seven people six or seven days a week. What do those other six people in your household do for chores, other than eat your food and complain about it? My siblings don't do anything. My parents? Uh, I'm not even sure, really. My mom cooks one night a week. They take care of their bedroom and bathroom, but other than that, I don't know. We have really messy areas of the home, but I'm only one person, and I'm not going to take all the housework on my shoulders, either. Last story is titled... Am I a hall for being upset after my mother-in-law criticized my parenting and called my daughter disgusting? So I, 34 female, and my husband, 37 male, have two children, 12 female and 7 male. A few days ago, my husband, my kids, and I went on a walk with my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and her kids. Don't worry, we all followed corona regulations. My kids were walking with their cousins when mother-in-law threw a disgusted look at my daughter and said, you should really put her on a diet. Kids should be so fat and disgusting. What are you feeding her? Just to clarify, my daughter isn't fat and has always been on the thinner side. I blew up at her and told her that I wouldn't allow anyone to talk about my children like that. But she got very upset and said, 
I wonder why my son married such a snowflake that can't even handle the truth. This was the last straw for me, and I took my husband and the kids and left. But apparently, mother-in-law told the rest of the family something completely different. And they have been blowing up my phone non-stop. Reddit. Am I the a-hole here? Not the a-hole. Time for your husband to step up and keep his mom slash extended family in check or just go no contact. Piggybacking here because I grew up with a grandmother who, loving as she was in my teens, kept reminding me I should hit the gym more often. Would watch my food like a hawk when we were at parties. Would ask me if I really needed to eat a second slice of pie or whatever. And would compare me to my slimmer sister or more athletic cousins. It took a toll. I was by no means fat. I would define myself as the curvier size 6. I'm from a place where sizes 0 to 4 are the norm. But always healthy and never had any issues with potential related diseases. It wasn't until my mid-twenties that I stopped hearing her whenever she spoke about my body or weight. And in my teens, for someone who already had a flaky self-esteem, having her around was always like a kick. When my mom heard the comments, she would tell her to shut up and should reaffirm that I was perfect the way I was. But I already heard the comments. OP definitely needs to get husband on board and they both need to be very clear with mother-in-law. Not they hull. Even if your daughter was overweight, that was a disgusting thing for your mother-in-law to say about a kid. Sure fire way to cause an eating disorder no matter how much the kid weighs. I think people shouldn't talk about someone else's weight in general. But pre-teen and teen years are such formative years. I think we all especially need to shut up about their bodies. Not day hole. Keep your kids away from mother-in-law. It's toxic people like that that mess with kids' self-esteem. I hope your husband supports you. Not day hole. You are a fantastic mother defending your children against someone attacking them especially a family member. I hope your husband has your and your daughter's back and isn't backing his mother. He has a choice. He's either on his daughter's side or his mother's. I gotta wonder, you said this was the last straw. What else has your mother-in-law been saying or doing? Also, in my experience, people who call other people snowflakes and people who can't handle the truth are bullies who just use that as an excuse to be hurtful and miserable human beings who, ironically, can't take the truth when people call them on it. Again, not only are you not a hole, you are a hero for standing up for your daughter. I wish my parents stood up to my grandmothers like you did.